everybody. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get 16 marks really easily with the biological approach. Now, this is for an open-ended 16 marker. It's not for where you've got a scenario, which is slightly different, but still it can be adapted for that. And it's also good for eight markers. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how to do that. I would actually begin with these three simple an easy AO1 points which you can expand. So I'm going to go over them and show you how to expand on them for six marks. And you may need to take one or two notes, it's up to you. I would begin with the brain itself and neurochemicals. What you want to be discussing here is that the actual brain is thought of as a mind in this model, which is completely different to the cognitive model. Because in the cognitive approach, the mind is not the same as your brain. So what are you going to discuss about your brain? You're going to, you're going to discuss about the structure of the brain itself and that it can drive our behaviour. And you want to give some examples from the course. Everybody's done memory, right? So everybody can bring in maybe Clive Waring here. But don't forget he had a trauma to his brain itself. He got an infection and that absolutely destroyed a part of his brain. Can you remember what it was? Well, it was a hippocampus. So you can discuss the hippocampus and Clive Waring. Don't go into too much detail, but that's an example of the structure of our brain having an impact on our behavior. Okay, for Clive, that was his short-term memory. If you've done eating behaviors, you could also do very well here to discuss the hypothalamus as well and discuss how that affects eating. There's loads of other things you might have done. It all depends what the options are, but I would I would absolutely want to bring in maybe Clive Waring or maybe, maybe HM as well because of course he had the same thing. He had a short-term memory Thing that happened because of a structure damage to his brain, slightly different with HM. They did an operation on his brain and they destroyed his memory. Famously put in a horrific way as they actually sucked out his memory. They opened his, you know, uh, they opened his skull and they actually decided to put a straw in it and they sucked out bits of his brain. They were trying to help him to stop his epilepsy. Horrible stuff going on, that was the 1960s. But there is the evidence that this will have a dramatic effect on our behavior. Then you want to discuss neurochemicals. Again, you want to use things which you have done in your course. So I would imagine, well, no, for sure, everybody's done OCD depression. So absolutely, that's what you want to discuss. So depression, low serotonin, that can cause depression. Then you could discuss OCD serotonin. Then you could maybe do schizophrenia, mention high levels of dopamine. Loads of things that you can discuss to show that our behavior will be changed by neurochemicals. That's it for two marks or so. Then you go on to discuss hormones, which is the actual biochemistry of our body. Now, again, this depends what you've done in your course. If you've done stress as an option, then you're on a big winner here because you can discuss things like cortisol levels, adrenal medulla, all these things, um, you know, no adrenaline adrenaline, adrenal cortex, and you're bringing in the structure of the brain and the actual biochemistry. But even if you've not done stress as an option, it's really good to bring it in here. And you can discuss things like female hormones. So you can discuss high levels of progesterone. Now, progesterone is just before a woman has her period. And it goes up and it lines the womb. But this can lead to a real change in a woman's behavior, which is known as menstrual syndrome. 
and has actually caused many women to actually do some pretty horrific crimes, or well, that's been suggested as a reason, you know, why they did. Okay, so body biochemistry. And again, you want to emphasize things which you know from your own course, is my suggestion. Finally, genetics. Now, genes absolutely drive our behavior, and they are purely biological. Don't spend all your time on this and ignore these two, or you won't be able to do effective AO3, so be very careful, but you must bring it in. So DNA will drive our behavior, and obviously DNA is inbuilt, and therefore many of our behaviors are actually inherited. Okay, and if you want to just do a little bit of revision around genetics, go to the Nature Nurture debate video I've done, and that's going to help you there. Okay, so, you know, when you're discussing this, you can bring in, uh, you know, what you've already done in the bio psych. So you can discuss things like prenotype and genotype if you want to, but keep it emphasized on behavior. Okay, and I would give one really good example of that. I would give an example where we know there is a genetic input. So I would discuss depression. We know there is a genetic factor in depression, although you wouldn't have done that on the first paper because you did another approach. But we know there is a genetic factor in depression. And, and you can use schizophrenia. That's again, that's a high genetic input there. Okay, so some behaviors have a very clear genetic and others are a bit more fuzzy. But almost everything, everything about us, we can find evidence that that is inherited. So that is a biological model for six marks. I think you may have noticed that I've, that I've absolutely left out the... Um, the evolutionary section of this. Now, why? I'd be very cautious. I know a lot of revision books have it in. All the evolutionary factors and, you know, survival and our behavior and so on. Don't bring it into a 16 marker, guys. Avoid it. Why? Because it doesn't link with really good AO3. And if you want to get an A star and you want to get a grade A, you must have really good links, okay, between the AO3 and the AO1. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I would leave out evolution. It's a completely different approach and it really doesn't link in here. Okay, so let's you know, so let's now move on to get our marks for AO3 points. Now, when we're going on to AO3, I suggest you begin with two really strong, favorable things about this approach. I'd begin with studies which support it. And that would be, of course, twins, the use of twins. Don't go to town on it, but you link it in with genetics. Okay, so twin studies links in here with genetics. The real evidence for genetic inheritance has to come from twins. And you can explain why that is, okay? Because MZ twins, identical twins, have a complete genetic identical profile. And therefore, when we can find those unfortunate you know, twins who've been separated at birth, it may not have been unfortunate, but I'm just putting that in, um, then we can say, wow, they've got this behavior and this behavior in common and so on and so on. And therefore, we can absolutely say that was not due to their environment, okay, because they were not brought up in the same environment. So twin studies often support genetics and for many things, okay, for depression, for anorexia, for schizophrenia and so on. And they're very viable and they're highly controlled and so on. Yes, there are some issues with them, but we're going to use it as a real supporting evidence for genetics. Now, the other plus is there are real life applications of this model. And the real life applications are drugs and scans. And where do you bring in these? Well, you bring these in with this point and this point. So actually drugs are used to control many biological factors. So if you've got low serotonin, 
and you're depressed, then we can give you antidepressants, okay? So we can give you SSRIs, you know, to control that. If you've got OCD, of course, we can also use the same drugs. If you've got stress levels, you know, sort of in your body, then we can use drugs to calm you down. They will be things like Valium, okay, diazepam, and so on. And you may need to Google these if you're not sure, you know, what these names are. And then scans. We can use scans, of course, which you've all done, with the brain itself. And we can actually get information on these scans, okay? So we can use fMRI scans to support the factor of the brain, which has an effect on our behavior. And we can use MRI scans for treating people. And then we might do surgery, or we might decide to give them drugs and so on. So there's a, you know, there's a real life application when we decide you know, that all of our behavior is actually driven by these three things. All right, so that's, that's the plus stuff. Now the minus stuff. Now listen up on this one. Students get this tricky one wrong. I've seen it so many times. Please listen. When we discuss a cause and effect minus thing here, we do not mean that there may be other factors involved. That is not going to get you many marks. That's a correlational issue. Again, have a look at my video for correlation data. It's not what we're looking at here, guys. Be very clear. And if you want to get a top mark, you're going to have to bring this in because it's the biggest issue with the biological model. Yes, there's these two issues, but this is the biggie. This is the big one. Okay, so here's how it goes. Even if we say you've got, let's say you've got depression and you've got low serotonin levels, there's an issue with cause and effect. Why? Not because there's other factors involved. No, no. Here's the issue. This is the issue. Okay, so you've got low serotonin, but which came first? Okay, did you become depressed? and you had a low mood, and then your serotonin levels went down? Or did your low serotonins drive your mood? Here's another example. Let's say you've got schizophrenia, and you've got high levels of dopamine. So did those levels go up, and then you started to hear voices? Or did the hearing of the voices make the dopamine go up? That's a cause and effect. And here's the AO3 point. We can never establish it. It is impossible to find the person at the very moment they became depressed and give them a scan or give them a blood test or something and find out these things, okay? It's impossible to find out, is it? The moment you become depressed, is it actually because of low serotonin or because of your mood and then your serotonin changes? So that's a very important point. And that means that we can never say for sure that the actual cause of your mental illness, of your behavior is biological cause and effect. Very important, very important thing here. So get it right. Okay, then you could go on to discuss the actual nature-nurture debate itself. The issue with this whole model is nurture will always have an impact. And even when we look at our twin studies in our genetic factors here, we can never, never say nurture doesn't have an impact. So again, look at the video I did on this. We can never say for sure that it was not nurture. Even if we have the guys who've been separated at birth, like, you know, twins or siblings, we can never rule out nurture. We can say it's highly likely, highly likely that it is genetic, but there's always a nurture impact. So that's a very important AO3 minus point. Nurture always is a big factor. Finally, determinism. Yes, this model is completely deterministic. And that's a minus point. 
and yet not a complete minus point. So here's how it goes. It's a minus point because it looks as though we have no control. We have no control over our genes. We're born with them. We're born to our parents. We, you know, we've got no choice. I want this mum and dad. I want that mum and dad. You're born, that's your mum and dad. You can't control your body biochemistry. Yes, you can use drugs but the initial biochemistry if you're more prone to have a premenstrual syndrome etc you can't control it and of course it'll be linked with your genes and the brain itself and your neurochemicals they're just happening they're out of your control and this will influence your behavior so it's very deterministic but the good thing about it being deterministic is that we can therefore use applications to cure you. We can use drugs, we can use some scans and we can find out what's going on in the brain and we can help you with medicine. Okay, so that's a very good 16 mark. Um, that's a good answer for you, okay? I don't, you know, I was going to use the word essay there. It's not an essay, guys. Don't go into the beginning, middle, and end of an essay. You don't need it in psychology. We don't do essays in psychology. It's a 60-mark answer. It's a science. So just get this science in there, and you'll get really good marks, believe me. Now, let's say you've got an eight-marker. Exactly the same. Outline and evaluate the biological approach for eight marks. Then you just, you know, these ones, you don't want to leave them out, but just do less there, less there, less there, and just do one of these AO3s here and one of these here. Or actually, if I was doing eight marks, I'd just do maybe this one or that one, and then I wouldn't want to lose out the cause and effect if I wanted my A star. I'd put that in, but I'd just do this one or that one. I wouldn't do all three. Okay, so I hope that was useful for you and I wish you lots and lots of luck.